Well, let's bring in Thomas O'Donnell, who is an energy and geopolitical analyst. Thanks a lot for joining us on DW Business. We just heard from Dmitry Peskov there saying Russia helps Europe with its energy security. But is there any doubt left that Russia is using energy as a weapon against Germany in the EU? Well, thanks for having me today, Rob. Um, you know, things were quite intense between Germany and the rest of Europe for a number of years. The rest of Europe was saying Germany was sort of opening the fortress door to the Trojan horse. And here we have it. We're very dependent on Russian gas, and now the Russians are weaponizing it to support their war of aggression in Ukraine. It can't be put any, any simpler. So basically, Germany's allies have been warning them that this was going to happen, and, 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 and it has happened. But this is what now... Germany and the EU has to deal with. Uh, the EU has yeah. agreed today to a plan on how it's going to reduce its reliance on Russian gas and indeed its overall reliance on gas this winter. But I mean, is there a realistic prospect of Germany just ending exports of gas to the EU altogether this year? No, uh, Germany has a very difficult situation much more difficult than, say, a country like Spain or Portugal, who installed many LNG terminals years ago. Um, yeah, in Germany, uh, the minister, quite rightly, Mr. Halbach, Robert Halbach, says we have to increase now storage by 75, 85, 95 percent, September, October, November. But the head of the transmission uh, system, the gas transmission system, Mr. Klaus uh, Müller, has said at 40 percent, he said this a couple of days ago, at 40 percent, uh, supplies coming through Nord Stream 1 is not possible. Now with 20%, it won't be possible. Furthermore, we have an overdependence on wind that was not thought through. There is no real grid scale storage. Although Halbach wants to agree to bring on massively coal to replace the gas that's being used to generate electricity, which is sort of a waste. We need to save that for heating in winter and for industry. Turns out the wind's not blowing and the Rhine is low, the water, you can't bring in enough coal. And so we're burning gas right now when we're supposed to be storing it to produce electricity in Germany at a higher rate than last year. So it's a very difficult situation. I can't see how there won't be rationing in Germany and a number of other countries this winter with you know grave consequences. This is Putin's plan to divide, to undermine the solidarity of Europe in support of Ukraine. It's an economic war. We've got this latest cut from 40% to 20%, but it only resumed at 40% yes. last week. I'm just wondering why yeah. has Moscow decided to do this this week and didn't just do it from the start last week when they, they, they turned the pipeline back on? Well, you know, I, I, you're asking me to kind of guess what's going on in Mr. Putin's head, but I, I think I can rely, you know, I think I could say that, you know, Putin can afford to cut off the gas completely at any time. The amount of money he earns from gas is substantial, but far less than from exports of oil. Three, four, five times less, depending on if you're talking about GDP or you know, state revenues. So he can afford to play games with gas. On the other hand, Europe is most dependent on Russian gas, more so than oil. There's alternatives for oil that can come by sea. There's no alternatives for other pipelines, really, in the short term. So this is his maximum pressure. Instead of turning it off completely, he's playing a game. He's setting, trying to set people against each other. And right now, I, I'd say his tactical aim is to prevent the storage from being filled so that when he does likely cut it off in winter, it'll have maximum effect. Um, that, that's how I see this, this current game. Okay. Thomas O'Donnell, energy analyst. Thank you very much for joining us here on DW Business. Thank you. Thank you. Now, in Germany, industries that have prospered from cheap Russian gas traditionally are now facing the prospect of having to do without so much of it. They'll be on the front line this winter if supplies are short, with the government planning to prioritise households. The question is, can they prepare in time? This is Vaka Shami. The German multinational employs around 60,000 people and is just one of the many companies in the so-called chemicals triangle in Germany's southern state of Bavaria. Cracking furnaces like these require massive amounts of energy and draw much of their power from Russian natural gas. Without gas flows in the proper amount, the company will struggle to keep production going. We are